Hi everybody, uh, today we wanted to talk about the healthcare industry and specifically ETFs uh, within the healthcare industry and just do a general review about what's been going on over the past year or a few years, um, kind of get an idea uh, for how important uh, the healthcare industry is uh, in terms of the stock market. Um, so for this past year, um, you can basically see uh, that this sector in here is the healthcare industry. Um, right in here, um, some of the largest companies uh, are United Healthcare, uh, Eli Lilly, Johnson Johnson, uh, and Ambiv and uh, Pfizer, and so on. So you can see basically by the size of the square there is basically the market cap, um, and then also the color tells you what the, how how much that particular company has been doing. So over this past year. Pretty much healthcare and energy sector has been the only two sectors um, that have kind of survived this downtrend. Uh, so we wanted to look at specifically the healthcare industry and the energy sector a little bit later, but I'll uh, start with the healthcare industry um, just to see how everything's been going. So in terms of overall sales, you can see that uh, you know companies like Apple, Microsoft, um, and Amazon, and you can see Google, Alphabet, Walmart way up there, um, Exxon Mobil. Um, these are some of the top companies in terms of sales in the world. But you also have United Healthcare Group, um, CVS Pharmacy, uh, McKesson Corporation, uh, and so on. So in, in Cigna Corporation. So you have a bunch of these other ones: uh, Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer. Uh, that are leaders in terms of uh, amounts of uh, overall sales dollars every year. So specifically within the healthcare industry, um, not all of them have been the same. So just because they have uh, more sales doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be on the right side of this graph. So this is a one year performance. You can see that uh, most of the healthcare industry actually has really struggled uh, this past year. Um, you can see some of the bigger, so the size of the bubble is basically tells you um, which company that is. Uh, so you can see Johnson & Johnson here and Pfizer have been kind of dead even this past year, um, whereas uh, Ambiv, uh, Eli Lilly has been doing pretty good, and also United Healthcare Group. Uh, but by far the best, uh, McKesson Corporation uh, way up here, both in sales and uh, in terms of their percentage growth. Um, so before we get into all the ETF details, I wanted to take a look at a couple of these charts just so we can see some of the companies that are kind of uh, involved in these ETFs. Um, so here you see another graph showing uh, basically the one year performance. So if you're on the right in green, that means you did well. Um, and this is the average volume traded. So the higher you're up here is more, more trades there are in the stock market. So United Health Group is pretty much the number one traded, followed by Johnson & Johnson here. Um, and then uh, probably number three is Eli Lilly. Um, and then Merck and Pfizer. So, um, and most of these most of these companies highly traded here have also been pretty um, in the green. It looks like, and then once you get down to uh, lower levels here, um, you start to see certain companies, Thermo Fisher, uh, and so on, Abbott Laboratories, and so on, that have had a little bit of trouble. Um, they've had a lot of sales, um, but not so much uh, on the return in the stock market. So in terms of ETFs, there's about 60 or so ETFs um, that are uh, basically healthcare related. Um, you can see that assets under management, the number one sector is technology. Number two is healthcare. So um, healthcare and then energy is basically about the same, but healthcare is just slightly more invested in than energy. Um, and you can see that, um, however, there's more ETFs in energy sector than there are uh, in the healthcare sector. Um, but here's kind of a graph just showing what's going on for that. So if you get a list of all the ETFs, these are the top ones, um, XLV um, and VHT, IPB, XBI, all these are the, some of the top ones. We're going to try to take a look at some of those, kind of graph them and see what's been going on uh, over the past few years. So what I wanted to do is first check that uh, indeed that they are kind of corresponding to the sector in terms of the weighting. Um, so we did look at all these details. We saw United Health Group was definitely uh, probably the number one. You see that they're weighted by 10% here in this in the portfolio. Johnson Johnson was probably around number two, uh, and so on. And then you have Ambev, Pfizer, and these other Eli Lilly, which were all in the top category. So the this particular ETF uh, is the XLV. It's the most traded healthcare sector, and it's pretty much by weight. 
Um, you can see it's currently going for the price here. Um, and it, this is the top 15 holdings that they have. Uh, so here's a graph of that ETF, the XLV. Um, and you can kind of see what's been happening over the years here, all the way back to 2006. Um, and you can see uh, the MACD kind of gives us some idea of what's been happening uh, in terms of buy and sell ranges. I'm going to clear off these other ETFs so we can make it a little bit clearer uh, which ETF we're talking about. We'll go back and look at some of those others hopefully. Um, but basically you can start to see here that we basically had a major run up uh, from essentially about 2000, just after the 2009 crash. Um, up to about 2015. So up to 2015, everything was going pretty good uh, for the healthcare sector. There was kind of another mini crash uh, for the healthcare sector until about 2016. And then things kind of went up and then they went down a bit. And then there was a major up right into 2020 after COVID. And you can see that that was pretty much what took us up to today. And then that crash that we saw here pretty much started around 12 of 2021, uh, which the rest of the market also saw some uh, problems in. So this other graph down here is a volume oscillator. You can kind of see what's been happening at the volume in the market. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can start to see that there was a lot of positive volume here, some negative volume, some negative volume, positive volume in different areas along the way. And if you prefer, you can just use a regular volume graph. However, I usually prefer looking at a volume oscillator um, just to see what's been going on uh, with the volume. So one very interesting thing is that the average two range, meaning the volatility of the market, definitely has been going up over the years. You can see um, we're almost at uh, this level here, which is quite a step above maybe four or five times uh, the kind of uh, average to range that we saw back in uh, 2013. So certainly uh, that's something to be concerned about. Um, we see that the candlesticks look bigger up here by far, uh, but that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, according to this, you know, we're almost back in COVID land right now uh, in terms of volatility. We did kind of get back to a, maybe a little bit more safer volatility range back here in 2021, but then it's been just climbing ever since. This is a really great graph. It's just price times volume, which gives us essentially the elder force index. And you can see that we basically have had a lot of force, positive force up until about here, um, which is 1221. And then we started to get negative force, but you can compare the force. So we're not really nearly the negative force that we have seen as the positive side. So that gives me a little bit of warning sign because things all, all being fair, maybe there should be some relatively balanced force on either the positive and negative side. Um, so we could see quite a little downward trend um, on such and these kind of stocks, but you never know what's going to happen. This is the overall money flow. It's similarly calculated the force index, uh, but it's price times volume as well. Uh, there's a couple different kind of money flows. I just use Twig's money flow, but it is very similar uh, to the other types of money flows. I can show you the other ones in a moment here. So here's an example of three different money flow calculations. They're basically very similar, um, but I can use the twigs uh, just to start us off here. Um, and you can kind of see that uh, a lot of the money was flowing into the market up until about 2013, um, and then slowly started to maybe not be, there's still money being positive. This is quite a ways above zero, as you can see. Um, and then the money started to drop out of the market somewhere around 2014. You can see that just kind of the volume wasn't there, the prices weren't going up as much, and then it just started to drop. So, uh, and then that similarly kind of happened again. You have another phase where we have money going back into the market, and then money started dropping around 8 of 2021. So that started, that started quite a ways before uh, a lot of this recent crash that you say, Let's say it's 12. A lot of people would say that the market started dropping here, but according to the healthcare industry, it'd be dropping around 821. I do like to look at the on balance volume um, just to see what the calculation is. And this is just looking at, doesn't look at the price at all, it just looks at the volume. So if the volume is negative or positive, it just keeps adding and it sums it all up. So you can see that in general, the market has really been going up according to the volume. So if you just study just the volume here, you just have to say that it's, bah, it looks a little bit more positive and we haven't really even seen very much negative uh, volume. 
Now, uh, on the price volume trend, uh, you can see a little bit different story, but pretty much the same thing. It shows a faster uptake in here uh, than in this side. So you can see that basically this section in here looks like it was pretty fast uh, up into 2015, uh, and then kind of like a flat level, uh, relatively speaking, uh, throughout most of 2018, 2019, and 2020, and then the COVID hit. So there are just a lot of ways to study uh, the industry. Um, you know, here's some Arun oscillators showing kind of the what's been going on in trends. You can see primarily a positive trend through here, and then kind of neither neither trend here, and then another positive trend. But basically, for the last, you know, the only negative trend we really had was back in 2008, um, and that was that was this whole trend. So we haven't even really started to see a negative trend. According to the rune oscillator, um, we're still on a pretty positive trend. Um, but uh, relative strength index, you can see that that's starting to drop. Uh, stochastic, that's also starting to cross over, and you can see uh, negativity on that, going all the way back to about 10 of uh, 21. So the good news is that we've really stayed pretty positive, but this recent drop is one of the most significant drops that we've seen. Um, it's more significant even than COVID, according to the MACD. So this drop here um, is just an amazing drop um, down, and we're almost getting into negative territory, which would be some of the first that we've seen uh, since 2008. Um, whether we'll get to that point, um, in the next few months we might decide that. Um, looks like we could hit that uh, level within uh, the end of this year. It could start in to get into negative territory if this doesn't turn around. So really, that's a big warning sign. We saw that warning sign kind of coming back on uh, second month of 2022, um, and certainly started to see a major drop uh, after that. So there's just, it's been pretty brutal, um, at least according to MACD. You can kind of see that on the volume graph. Uh, you can see that the volume definitely did go down to a low level. It's been kind of fluctuating here, staying here at a lower level. Um, so most of the volume has been pretty negative. So anyway, uh, that just about does it uh, for the study here. Uh, again, there are a lot of ETFs to look at. Uh, we can go through and try to see some of those um, to see what you know what the different uh, changes are and things. Uh, but it's certainly very helpful to try to go through and see. And overall, uh, you know, the healthcare industry is the pretty much only green, main green area here. Like there's energy over in this area here that's looks, looking pretty good. Uh, and then healthcare looks pretty good. And healthcare plans in particular look good. There are definitely certain companies uh, out here on these outliers path here that have done very, very good. Um, you know, and then certain ones even on the bigger side that have done very good um, as well. Uh, and uh, you know, it just uh, it'd be important to kind of go through these and see. I'll try to post the links uh, to this uh, review here. So certainly, you can go through and take each one of these ETFs. Uh, we took the top one here uh, and kind of study that in detail. Uh, but all these other ETFs, this other one, pretty much followed the same path. The VHT IBB was a little bit different. X XBI is a little bit different as well. Um, so these two in particular, you might as take them as a separate category. These two are kind of very similar. So, um, but it is worthwhile kind of looking at the ETFs and seeing uh, because it kind of gives you a general overview for what's been happening in the industry. Anyway, I hope you really liked this recording. Uh, I thought it's been interesting uh, to definitely see what's been going on in all these uh, different sectors. Um, it's definitely worthwhile to kind of look at uh, all the details. Uh, and kind of come up with some of your own reasoning and uh, ideas. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, send me a question. I'd be glad to talk with you about it. Uh, let me know what you think about the ideas. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great day.